Short introduction to injector testing. Here we have set up a fuel rail, set up with a pressure regulator here that's just connected to atmospheric pressure, so it'll be running at standard uh, 43.5 psi line pressure. Got a number of test injectors here, note they're all clipped in so they're not going to pop out when testing. We've only got one connected up here and got a graduated cylinder here, 0 to 100 cc. So when we run the test we're going to be measuring different volumes up on here. Got my Mega Squirt 3 here, and we've got the laptop here running to Uni Studio, which I'll now just put this into test mode. So I go to output test mode, and in here it says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, tab, then click on burn. Once you've done that, do not click burn again. Like it says, only burn once. Normally when testing you'd be using the fuel pump relay. In this test I haven't got a relay hooked up so I've just got a power switch on the fuel pump. So if I put test mode to injectors, the output interval here is how often you want the injector to fire. The default there is just under 200, that's so you can actually hear it operating. When we're doing a normal test we probably want it maybe something like 20 milliseconds so the test completes faster. Output testing mode or injector testing mode there, we're just going to run one. I'm connected up to injector A. If we just demonstrate it here, say with a pulse width of 4 milliseconds, and then run that for 100 cycles, as soon as I tab out of that, the injector is now operating. Well, we've got no fuel pressure in there, so it didn't do anything. I'll come back up to here and say we'll try 200 on there. I'll turn the fuel pump on with my switch. Turn out of that field and now you can see the fuel is being dispensed into the cylinder and we then take a reading off there of the amount of flow that's been dispensed. When I'm doing the test I'll normally set it up so that however whatever pulse width they're at I set the number of cycles that it'll pretty much fill the cylinder up so you get a greater accuracy. Because obviously if you're talking about 1cc out of 100cc you've got 1% error whereas if you're talking about 1 out of 10 you've got a 10% error. After each test I need to take the cylinder off and pour away the uh, fluid. and make sure the cylinder is completely empty before you start the test. So I'm going to do a test here with uh, 2000 I think. So 2000 in there, tab, just in time. I'll take a reading there of 89cc. So what I'm going to do now is start doing the test at different pulse widths. So we've got 89cc there with 2000 injections at 4 millisecond pulse width. So I'm going to write that down on my chart and I'll start now compiling the data. Also during the test you want to check out the battery voltage. What I've done here is I've changed this gauge to uh, pick up sensor inputs. Can get that battery voltage and then I've got a digital multimeter here picking up on the uh, battery voltage as well and within point 0.1 which is the accuracy that we've got in the mega squirt reading we're within sensible readings there. Okay now having taken the results I then stuck those into a spreadsheet here so I've got pulse widths down here the number of pulses I used, the cc that I measured, and then I put in a formula there for cc per pulse. So basically that's just cc divided by number of pulses. So that gives the actual fuel flow per millisecond. 
I've then inserted an XY type chart here, so I'm plotting the pulse width across the bottom and the CC per pulse width on the Y axis here. And that's important to have that as an XY graph and get rid of any other lines that it decides to put on there for you. So you can see here that there's a couple of points that are slightly off the line, but of having added linear regression on here with a, a trend line there, you can see that certainly the higher points here give very good agreement, whilst there's a slight variation at the bottom. But what we're really interested in here is where that trend line extends and crosses here on the x-axis. That is your injector dead time there. And we can see from this it's just under one millisecond. Now what I'd suggest on that is to print that out and use a ruler and as accurately as you can find that point there. And I'm going to treat that as 0.9 milliseconds for these injectors at that 12.04 volts. I'm probably actually going to repeat that point there because at 4 milliseconds I'd expect it to be fairly linear. Down here in the 2 millisecond region and certainly if you take some pulse widths around here you'll find that the injector is behaving in a non-linear way. Certainly up at the top end here it's clear to see that these points here are right on the trend line and that one's not quite on it so I'm going to do that point again. Okay so I decided that I would actually repeat the 4 millisecond reading because I wasn't happy with how that plot was lying on the graph. So this time I've got 1800 pulses still this time I've got 92 cc which now the point here is far more in agreement with the other points and even the uh, 2 millisecond is still pretty much in agreement I read it that one as well. What's interesting here is with the uh, trend line it's now showing a different dead time so it's quite important there that any outlying points it's either worth repeating them to uh, confirm that it's a true reading or even taking them out of the results when you plot the chart. So if you continue to plot the lower pulse widths here you'd expect to see the chart falling off which could then impact what you've got with the uh, linear regression on here. So I'm now going to say that that's something more like um, 0.8 milliseconds, not 0.9 milliseconds. So that's the dead time that I'm going to be using. OK, now that we've used the graph and we've figured out what we believe our injector dead time is at that voltage, we need to come to the uh, injector dead time screen and actually apply that into the Megasquirt 3. So the main areas of this screen here, for the MS3X injectors, which are what we're using here, that's the panel there. For the main board, two injectors, the panel down here controls them. And over on the right hand side we've got optional four curves for corrections. Normally, unless you uh, are really advanced in what you're doing, you're just going to be using the one curve and you probably just want to use one dead time for all of the injectors on that bank unless you've actually repeated that analysis of the injectors for each injector. The time when it might be of value is, for instance, if you'd got low impedance injectors on uh, one channel and then maybe you've got staged injectors which are a different type on a different channel. That would be valid. However, if they're all the same injector type, you'd normally expect the dead time to be close enough that within the accuracy of our measurements we're not going to see the difference between them. Also you note here that it says dead time at 13.2 volts. We've then got the correction curve over here and you'll notice 13.2 volts is where the line crosses 100%. Now in our experiment here we've measured it where the green line is here which is less than 13.2 volts so it's got a correction here of I would say is around 120% at that point. We could work out where it is but it's about 120%. Now what that means is that whilst we've measured a dead time of 0.8 milliseconds it's actually going to be lower than that at the higher voltage. So we need to take that 120% into account because what it'll do is it takes the number that's here, multiplies it by the percentage and uses that figure. Note that the figure of 1.0 milliseconds is the default but is likely not correct for most injectors. You do need to review that number, which is why we've done this test. So I open up a calculator and do my sums. That's the previous result there. So if I take in 0.8, I'm going to divide by the 120%, so divide by 1.2, and then work out 0.67 milliseconds at 13.2 volts. So come back over to Tuner Studio. Key 0.6 milliseconds, 6 7 milliseconds into there, and then burn that in. 
it'll then use that, multiply by the 120% and work out the injected dead time that we've actually measured. Setting the dead time like this really is important. You, at the very least you should be looking up standard tables for the injectors or out of the manual and applying that because if you just use the 1.0 milliseconds you certainly will have problems. We've definitely seen examples of people who are using low impedance injectors hadn't changed the figure or maybe even put it as 1.2 or something even worse and have serious low low tunability problems where at idle they just haven't got a chance of controlling it because they programmed in the wrong figures which then Megasquirt just uses. So hopefully now you've got a, an accurate dead time you'll have better low load warm-up behavior ego correction behavior and all of the other corrections that apply a small amount of pulse width having the correct dead time really does make a difference. So for doing overall flow test on the injector you can just run the injector full duty cycle like so and if you run this for either 30 seconds or a minute depending on the flow this injector is too large to run it for a full minute. We're going to run this for approximately 30 seconds. And the real test, when I've got more hands, I can stop it at exactly 30 seconds and see what the flow is. Well, see, this jug here is pretty low accuracy, but you can see there it's around 450 cc, which says we're somewhere around the region of 900 cc. By running the injector fully open all the time, you take away the issue with the injector dead time. Which, if you're using the other method, you need to take that off the figure when you're doing a calculation. You find information like this in the manual in the near future, or if you look in Corky Bell's book Maximum Boost, he's got some really good information there about doing rudimentary tests on injectors, pumps, and all that kind of stuff.